Okay. First thing, we'll go through this. If you did not do well on this, this is something. Try to pay attention. If you got questions, ask. I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm going to do one and four, and I'll give the answer for five. Okay? So, um, you are supposed to use page 437 to determine if it's aqueous or solid. Okay? So then, what you do is you'll go ahead and um, do your double replacement, and then you'll see if you get a solid or aqueous or not. So then the K3PO4 aqueous, and then you have MgCl2 aqueous. I'll probably run out of room here, but I'm just going to put an arrow and put it down below. Then we have a double switch, MgPO4. Okay. Some of you are bringing the the uh, um, on this one here, some on the K C L, you're bringing the three with the K. You know, you just write one of each. Then you look at the charges to see if they balance. Okay, so it'd be M G three, and then P O four two. Right. And then we'll determine if it's a solid or not by our chart. Then the next one we write is K C L. And then we don't bring the three, we don't bring the two, those are separate. So we just write one of each, and then we determine the char charges by balancing. So they're balanced already, so I don't have to do anything with the subscripts. Okay. Then I look at my list on there, and it says phosphates are pretty much insoluble. The exceptions are not, would not be one, would be magnesium. So it would be a solid. And then KCL would be aqueous. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay, so there's uh, three things you're doing. You're doing the double switch, writing one of each. Second thing is you're balancing charges. Okay, and then making sure the, the equations balance as well. All right, which we haven't done yet. And then the next thing is aqueous or salt. So the balance of the equation, we would just put... Uh, three in front of MgCl2, then a six in front of KCl, okay, and then we put a two in front of K3PO4. Okay, so on all of these, to be fully correct, you have to balance as well. You can't just do it and then go on. You just have to make sure that you have balanced equation. Any questions on that? Okay, I will go through number two. MgS is a solid. Okay, MGS is a solid on number two because sulfides are insoluble and uh, nitrates would be uh, aqueous. So the KNO3 would be aqueous. So that one should read KNO3 and then MGS with a two in front of the KNO3. Okay, and number three should be NH4 parentheses with a 2 behind it in SO4. And that's aqueous. And then LICL. And that would be aqueous. Okay. And then uh, on that one, to balance it out, you'd put uh, <coughs> a 2 in front of LICL and a 2 in front of the NH4Cl at the beginning. Okay. So that would be a no reaction. Okay. So neither one of those reacts. So that would be aqueous, no reaction. <coughs> All right, uh, number four, I'll go ahead and show you. Number four, we have CaCO3, charges balance out. So we're okay on that one. A lot of students are, that are getting this wrong would write Fe3Cl, thinking I've got to have three chlorines or three irons. But that free just represents the charge. So you're not going to write FeCl3, you're going to go ahead and use that as your charge and then balance it out later. So that's a plus 3, minus 1. So then we need 3 of those chlorines to balance it out. Then we're going to go ahead and do our double switch. K3 
Okay, which it tells us what we're going to do anyway. So we're going to write calcium chloride, CaCl2. All right, because it's a plus two and minus one. Some students are bringing that three over, possibly. And then uh, our final one would be Fe, and it would be two. And then uh, CO3 parentheses with a three. Because that's a plus three and a minus two. So we gotta balance those out. Okay, and then balance out the, old, the overall reaction at that point in time. So we have two and three with chlorine, so that's probably gonna be three in front of this one, two in front of iron, and then two in front of the CaCO3. So that's the way we and then the last one will look like this. I'll go ahead and do that one real quick. It's SRDR2 plus F2. It's going to give you SRF2 plus CR2. Any questions on that? So that would be the last one. Okay. Um, come in if you got questions, some things you need to work on in that. Um, that would be great. Um, it, no, if it's, uh, if it's one of your diatomic molecules. So those are the genuine elements. That would be hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. Okay, so this is for single replacement reactions. Um, what you have to do is locate the element by itself. Okay, we're using only this chart on page 286. We're not looking at the periodic table, we're not using that right yet. And we find the other element that's a metal. So pretty much all metals are on that left side. And you find them and you locate, <coughs> you decide if the one metal is above the metal that's bonded already, then it will replace it. If the metal by itself is below on the list, then it won't replace it. Okay, so is barium above calcium? Okay, so it is. So barium will replace calcium and calcium will go by itself. So barium is above, more active. It will replace anything that, um, a metal that would be below it that's combined with something else. So barium will come in, will kick calcium out. So when it kicks calcium out, since they're metals, they're just going to go by themselves. They're not diatomic or anything like that. So then we would get Ca, all right? And how you can tell if it's a solid or a gas is these dark colors are all solids when they're by themselves. The reds are gases, and the blue would be a liquid. I don't think we'll have those situations come up. Okay. So we write Ca, and we write a solid. And then this one, we're going to write BA with CL. And we're not bringing the two over. Now, it might look like the two comes over, but we're going to look at charges next. So that's why you got to have your periodic table. Some of you are doing these. Uh, I notice that you're not looking off your periodic table for charges. So you got to look off the periodic table for charges. So BA is a plus two. And chlorine's a minus one. So it's BaCl2 because the charges are balanced in that way. And chlorides are soluble, so we'll say Aq. Now, predicting what they are is not the primary focus of what we're trying to do today. Okay? So telling if they're solid or aqueous, that, that is something we'll keep practicing and working on. But what our primary focus is is determine if we have the one metal will replace another metal. Yes, Christian? How do you know if you bring the, the number over from the first side? Okay, you never bring the number over unless it's part of the original ion. All right. You never bring those numbers over unless it's part of a polyatomic ion. Then you have to. Okay. Right. So I think that is some confusion, is that some think you need to bring it over, and you just write one of each. Okay, if it's a polyatomic ion, you write one of each. So on this, this next one, you kind of see that come into play. 
So on this next one, is potassium um, higher than lead? Yes. Okay. So it replaces lead. So we write K with the NO3. Like on this one, Christian, you would bring the 3 over with NO3 because it's part of nitrate. Mm -hmm. okay. Otherwise, if you don't, then you don't longer have that ion. But we don't bring the 2 over. And then we determine our subscripts by looking at charges. And if they balance out, then you just have one of each. And then the next one, we have lead by itself. So it would be PB. And KNO3 is probably going to be aqueous because nitrates are soluble on our list. What we did, what we did with uh, double displacement. And then this would be a solid. So are all elements solid when they're by themselves? No, hydrogen won't be. Oxygen won't be. So a lot of those non, those non metals that are red up there, they'll be gases. So they are soluble? So no, they're not soluble when they're by themselves. They're a gas. Soluble means you'd have to have a compound that's dissolved in water. Okay, let me give you one to do on your own, or a couple to do on your own. I'll come around and check to see how you're progressing on that. We are going to do a lab today or start a lab and we'll finish tomorrow. There's, pro there's a few of, in of you in here that will be gone tomorrow because of testing. Who will be gone tomorrow because of testing? Courtney, anybody else gone tomorrow because of testing? You're going to be gone in the morning? You guys know your list? 846. So, we'll try to have you guys get going here earlier. Maybe you guys can get done with the lab. Okay? <coughs> so. All right. So, I'm going to have you do a couple of these. Okay, try those two. Now, the H, when we have one with an H, that's, we look at the H2. Okay? So we have one with an H, we look at H2. So that's the one we have to look at. Dalton, I need you to pay attention today. Okay? Now, these are all single dis displacement, and we need to decide if they happen or not. We look at MN and SN. MN's above SN. I said make MN a plus two if it does replace. So MN will replace SN and go with the, the CL. We write one of each. So it would be MN, CL. MN's a plus two. Chlorine's a minus one. So it's MN, CL2. Chlorides are pretty much soluble unless it's a lead or silver or mercury. So you could write an aqueous on that. And then SN goes by itself and it'd be a solid. Any questions on that? And it's balanced, so you don't have to do anything with it. Next one, the H is the H2. These are all acids. So if there's a metal above an acid, it's going to react. If it's below, like copper and silver and that, they don't react with acids. So Al will go with the NO3, one of each to begin with. Then we look at charges. Lumens of plus three. Nitrate's a minus one. So that makes nitrate parentheses with a three. So the charge is balanced. And then what we end up with uh, is H by itself. Some of you write H like that, but it needs to be H2. Because hydrogen's diatomic when it's by itself. So we have to use that rule that when hydrogen reacts to form hydrogen gas, it's diatomic. We know hydrogen's a gas at room temperature, and then all nitrates, for the most part, are soluble. So we're going to AQ for that. And then we would balance it. Um, I think we're going to find out we're going to have to have 
a six involved in this process. So um, when you get done balancing it, it should look like this. Okay? That one's a little tougher to balance. What's that? A G in parentheses here? Yeah. It's a gas. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just telling you the state of matter. Okay. If you've got this, then I'm going to have you work on that. And the juniors that are going to be testing tomorrow, we're going to have them come over. I'm going to get them started so they can finish. What do the X's mean on this? The X's mean you do those. One, nine, and ten you don't have to do. We'll talk about those tomorrow, maybe, or Thursday. Okay?